It's a big one. It is Diecast Masters model 85671, and it's the 1 to 50 scale Caterpillar 798 AC mining truck. Let's start out with a new Cranes Etc. Waybridge, and we'll put this big box straight on it. And we're looking at 6.5 kilograms, and for those of you that are challenged by the system of 100s, it's £14.3. What we see first is the outer shipping carton, so let's open that up. And really, the only way to get to the contents is to go for end tipping. What we then get to see is a couple of large expanded polystyrene trays. And they are taped together, so you need to get the sharp knife out. After some fiddly and messy cutting, you can separate the two trays. And then we get to see our old favourite, the Diecast Masters tin. It looks great with excellent photos of the real machine on it. And it's also nice because on the back side is another nice photo and there's technical information about the real truck. Yes, this really is a metal tin. And just like a big biscuit tin, we need to take the lid off. This particular one is a tight fit. With the lid off, there's some protective material to remove, and then we get our first look at the model. There are a couple of paperwork items, and we'll look at those in more detail soon. And then there's a big plastic former on top, and you can see it's got some parts contained within it. Next out is a piece of plastic film, and then we get to the model proper. At this point, we need to take a deep breath and get ready to lift this heavy model out. So there we have it, all safely in one piece. But let's drive it carefully to the Cranes Etc. Weighbridge and see how much the model itself weighs. And once it's carefully parked, we see that it weighs nearly 3.4 kilograms or 7.4 pounds. Let's take a look at the bits and pieces that are included. And there's a simple instruction sheet that tells you how to install the operator. There's a provided pointer tool and the operator and also two wheel chocks. And there's also a mini 2021 Diecast Masters catalogue, and that shows you all of the models that you haven't got. For the assembly, there's only a couple of things to do, and the first is to install the wheel chocks. And we'll put them in this way, which is different from the way they sometimes appear. But hey, we can do what we like. Nobody's watching. And talking of driving, let's install the operator. We can use the pointer to open the door, and then it's best to get hold of the operator around the neck just like you would with any other employee. It stops them moaning as you do what you need to do, and that is to force him into the cab to start work. Then you can shut the door and leave him there for the next 10 years. As usual, we start underneath for our look at the detail, and the model is impressive with many parts modelled. The underside of the engine is visible, and the steering mechanism is modelled with some nice details at the connection point next to the wheels. One of the standout aspects of the detailing are all of the soft hoses, and they give the underside of the model a very busy appearance. The rear axle is of heavy construction. The tyres have a tread pattern with a bald central section. Another nice detail is the soft mud flaps. While we're upside down, let's have a closer look at the back. And there are rock deflectors and a safety cable for when the dump bed is being maintained in an up position. There's some nice bolt head detailing. And there's also a cast in Diecast Masters logo. But I'm not sure you'd see that on the real truck. Moving to the front, and the handrails are metal and all nicely thin. And overall, the front grille looks convincing, and there are small lights detailed. And there again, you can see the wheel chock holder. One nice touch is that the vertical ladder also has non slip texturing. The model is very impressive from a low viewpoint, as you can see the engine behind the front wheels. And some of the small detailing is particularly pleasing, such as on this tank. And it also includes properly formed lifting eyes. The wheels are plastic, but that does mean that they are detailed. 
And between the wheels, you can see that this big tank also has some very nice small detailing. Moving to the rear axle, and it's all very impressive. And that's because it's a combination of tiny details and big heavy model construction. Moving up to the cab deck, and there's an excellent mesh grille. And there's also a load indicator, and at the moment the truck is running empty. The graphics on the model are very sharp. And the main mirrors are soft plastic. There are also a pair of impressive exhaust pipes. Up on the main cab deck, the metal surface has a texture, and the electrical cabinets are impressively detailed. The cab has got a pair of seats inside, and they have the cat logo. There's another load indicator on the roof, and sharp graphics on the door. The main lift rams are two stage. But the middle section is grey plastic and doesn't look quite so good. Moving to the dump body and there are lifting eyes formed. And the other details include sharp graphics and formed rivet holes. Looking into the top the panel details are there. And at the rear end there is heavy texturing. A nice detail are the formed round holes in the structure underneath the dump body. We're back underneath and it's good to see that the individual wheel groups spin independently. And if we move to the front axle we can check the steering. It moves precisely but it does seem to be just perhaps a little bit shallow. And a little bit more movement would have been nice. The rear axle has suspension and it has a very good range of movement. Out in the Cranes Etc mine and the 798 rolls very smoothly. And of course the heavy weight of the model does help that. Let's put some steering on, and you can see that it does trace a curve, although it is quite shallow. Let's view the suspension from the back end, and you can see that it's up and down, and also side to side. Getting onto the truck does require special methods, so at one side there's a fold down ladder, and on the other there's a fold down staircase. Carrying a load is important, but of course dumping your load is something you always want to do. The hydraulic rams are stiff, and the overall tipping angle is reasonable. Back onto the cab deck, and there are some opening gates in the handrails. And in fact there are three of them, and they all work very well. If you want access to the engine from the cab deck, there's a large flap that can be opened up. It stays open and it gives you a view of some of the large components of the engine. We've seen already that the outer door of the cab can be opened, but also the inner door can be opened. A mining truck needs a big loader, and we've got one. It's a Kirkland heavy duty laundry detergent loader, and you won't see many of these on the mines around the world. It's a great machine, and it's able to fill the truck in a single pass. Yes, only on Cranes Etc can you see nonsense like this. This is an impressive model of Caterpillar's 798 AC mining truck by Diecast Masters. It is solid and robustly made, with lots of nice details. There's also plenty of functionality and it looks great with other models. It is rather pricey, but overall it's excellent.